All right, listeners, it's Beaujolais Nouveau Day. The third Thursday in November. You know it. Yeah. And we are ready to uncork this whole Beaujolais Nouveau yeah. thing. Yeah. Not just, like, what is it, but, like, why is it such a phenomenon? Exactly. Why the hype, the rush, the races. Why Swansea seems to love it even more than Lyon. We've got articles, Wikipedia deep dives, even some fun social media threads. It's going to be good. So set the stage for us. What exactly is Beaujolais Nouveau? Okay, so imagine, right, a snapshot of this year's harvest, bottled and ready to drink like weeks after the grapes leave the vine. That's crazy fact. That's the magic of Vente de Primeur. Literally. Early wine. It's a whole different philosophy. Totally. And Beaujolais Nouveau is like the poster child for that. Made entirely from Gamay grapes, by the way. Grown in the Beaujolais region of France, which we'll get into more later. Absolutely. But first, think light-bodied, bursting with fruit, and meant to be enjoyed young. Yeah, forget cellaring this one. It's about that vibrant, fresh taste of this vintage. Speaking of fresh and fast, from grapes to glass in just six, eight, eight weeks... That's got to be some kind of record. It's a whirlwind. Is this where the whole carbonic maceration thing comes in? You got it. Because it sounds a bit sci-fi, to be honest. More straightforward than you think, actually. Really? Instead of crushing the grapes, they're sealed in a tank, pumped full of carbon dioxide. Ooh, interesting. And this triggers fermentation inside the grapes themselves. So, no stomping, no oak barrels, no decades aging in a cellar. Nope. This is instant gratification winemaking, capturing those bright, juicy flavors. Strawberry, banana, all that good stuff. And while maximizing that fruitiness, it keeps the tannins super low. The tannins, those bitter, drying compounds. Exactly. So you get the smooth, easy-drinking wine that's perfect for celebrating. Because it's all about celebration, right? Yeah. I was reading on Wikipedia, it started at like a local end-of-harvest party for the wine makers themselves. Exactly. Imagine. Pictures of this fresh young wine in the bars of Lyon toasting another successful harvest. And from those humble beginnings, it's become a global phenomenon. Crazy. Official yeah. release dates, races to deliver the first bottles around the world. It's amazing how this simple tradition captured the world's imagination. And I think it's that connection to the rhythm of nature. It's like a reminder to slow down, appreciate the simple pleasures. Exactly. Speaking of appreciation, let's talk about the region itself, mm. right? Because we're focusing on the region in this deep dive. Beaujolais clearly goes way beyond just this one famous wine. Oh, absolutely. It's nestled south of Burgundy, right? right. And it's got a fascinating story to tell. Burgundy, with its prestigious Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, all about aging, complexity. Right, whereas Beaujolais, Gamay, is king. And it thrives in those unique granite soils, producing these vibrantly fruity, approachable wines. So it's two different winemaking philosophies side by side. Totally. And even within Beaujolais itself, you've got varying levels of quality. Oh, like what? Well, you've got basic Beaujolais, then Beaujolais villages, and then you, the 10 crew villages. Crew villages, like Grand Cru, like Bordeaux. Think of them as the superstars. Each crew... Fleury, Morgan, moulin -Aval, to name a few, has its own distinct personality expressed through that Gamay grape. Okay, color me intrigued. But before we go full-on crew, what about the history of Beaujolais? Well, winemaking there goes back to Roman times, but yeah. it was the Benedictine monks in the Middle Ages who really put it on the map. The monks? Yeah. They saw the potential of Gamay, which back then was considered less noble than, say, Pinot Noir. Like, they were the OG Gamay fans. And they established many of the region's winemaking traditions we still see today. Wow. So from Roman vineyards to medieval monks to a global wine phenomenon, Beaujolais is a lot more than meets the eye. Definitely more than just one style of wine. It's a whole journey. Layers of history, tradition. It's exciting to peel them back and really understand the soul of this region. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So next up, those Cree villages, hmm. those hidden gems of Beaujolais. I'm ready for the adventure. Let's go. All right, picture this. Rolling hills, vineyards as far as you can see. Sounds idyllic. And that crisp autumn breeze carrying the scent of ripe Gamay grapes. Uh, take me there. That's the magic of the Beaujolais Cruz. Each village, a world of its own. Exactly. A unique personality shaped by its terroir. Okay, paint me a picture. What makes these crusts so special? Well, let's start with Fleury, often described as the most uh, feminine of the crusts. Feminine? Delicate floral aromas, you know, violets, roses... Ooh, elegant. And a silky, smooth texture. It's a wine that whispers elegance, doesn't shout it. I like that. 
What about if you want a bit more uh, boldness in your glass? Then Morgan is calling your name. Morgan, okay. Known for being more robust, mm -hmm. structured. Mm -hmm. Earthy notes of plum, black cherry, even a hint of spice. Sounds delicious. And it can age beautifully, too. It develops even more complexity over time. So we've got Elegant Flurry. We've got Brawny Morgan. Who else is in this crew village lineup? Ah, then there's Moulinaval. Moulinaval. <laughs> Often considered the king of the crust. The king, huh? Powerful structure, firm tannins, incredible aging potential. Very impressive. Demands your attention. So what makes Moulinaval so regal? What sets it apart? Terroir, terroir, terroir. It always comes back to terroir. Right. Moulinaval sits on this unique outcropping of pink granite. Gives the wines a distinct minerality structure. Fascinating. And it's one of the few Beaujolais crusts where oak aging is common. Ah, so adding another layer of complexity. Exactly. So each crew is like its own microcosm of Beaujolais, right? Yeah, yeah. Showing the incredible diversity exactly. of terroir winemaking styles. That's what makes exploring the crust so rewarding. It's like, hmm, like a treasure hunt. I like that. Uncovering hidden gems, you know? Yeah. The nuances of this fascinating region. I'm ready to book a flight. But before I go full wine tourist, are these crew wines only made in the traditional style? Good question. Or is there room for experimentation? Well, many winemakers in the crust do stick to traditional methods. Mm -hmm. But there's a growing movement of uh, younger, innovative producers who are pushing the boundaries a bit. Ooh, rebellious winemakers. Tell me more. Some are experimenting with different fermentation techniques. Indigenous yeasts, for example. Interesting. Or extended maceration periods. Ah, so playing with those techniques. Others are exploring the use of amphorae. Amphorae. Or larger oak barrels, you know, to add subtle nuances. So respecting tradition, but not afraid to innovate. Exactly. It's a beautiful balance. Does this modern approach change the character of the cruise wines much? Well, it can introduce interesting variations, flavor profiles, textures. Okay, give me some examples. Some of these newer style wines might have a brighter acidity, okay. more pronounced fruitiness, or a softer tannic structure. So it's really shaking things up a bit. A little bit, yeah. Sounds like the world of Beaujolais Cruz is anything but static. That's the beauty of it. Constant evolution. There's always something new to discover. And that makes it even more exciting. I think so, too. Okay, I am officially adding a Beaujolais crew tasting tour to my bucket list. You won't regret it. But for now, let's bring it back to Beaujolais Nouveau. Okay. I've talked about the science, the history, the region. What about the experience? Right. It's more than just a wine. Yeah. It's a cultural phenomenon. Our social media sources are buzzing, people sharing their Beaujolais de Vaux plans, photos. Everyone has their own way of celebrating. It seems like it. Some are hosting themed parties. Others are hitting their favorite wine bars. It's true. There's even that tradition of racing the first bottles around the world. From Concorde jets to elephants? Or... Well, maybe just delivery trucks these days. Maybe. But the point is, the marketing behind Beaujolais Nouveau really tapped into something special. Creating this global event around a young, simple wine. Absolutely. It's the power of storytelling, shared experiences. And the appeal of a wine that's successful, fun, meant to be enjoyed in the moment. Exactly. So as we're savoring our glass of Beaujolais Nouveau... We're participating in a tradition... That spans continents. Connects people... Through a shared love of wine... It's pretty special when you think about it. It is. It's a reminder that sometimes the simplest things in life are the most meaningful. Beautifully said. So for those who want to delve deeper into Beaujolais beyond Nouveau, where do they go from here? I'm thinking about all those crew villages we talked about. Yeah. Fleury, all delicate and floral. Beautiful wines. Morgan with that earthy depth. Yeah. Moulin Avant, the king. The king. Where should our listeners even begin if they want to explore that side of Beaujolais? Well, the beauty is there's no right or wrong answer. It's all about personal preference and the joy of discovery. True. If you're drawn to lighter, more elegant wines, yeah. Fleury is a wonderful place to start. Okay. For those who prefer a bit more structure, intensity, Morgan's is an excellent choice. Got it. And if you're curious about aging potential, Moulin Avant will definitely reward your patience. So it's like choosing your own adventure. Yeah. Through the vineyards of Beaujolais. Any tips for finding those hidden gems? Don't be afraid to uh, talk to your local wine merchant. Oh. 
Good advice. They can point you toward producers who are doing exciting things. Yeah, those are the best. And if you ever get the chance to visit Beaujolais... Oh, dream trip. Take advantage of wine tastings at the different domains. You'll get to experience the wines firsthand, meet the people behind them. That's on the bucket list. Yeah. But for those of us who can't just hop on a plane, right? how can we bring a little bit of that Beaujolais experience home? Food pairing. It's a fantastic way to enhance those Beaujolais wines. What kind of pairings? Think classic French bistro fare. Charcuterie, cheese, roast chicken. Oh, uh, yum. Anything with earthy mushrooms. That light, fruity character of Beaujolais is so versatile at the table. So it's not just about how the wines taste on their own. Right. It's how they elevate the whole dining experience. It's about conviviality, shared meals. Exactly. Beaujolais wines are about celebrating the simple pleasures of life. Good food, good company, good wine. And that's a message that resonates no matter how much you know about wine. I think so, too. It's been such a fun journey. Uncovering the layers of Beaujolais. We've gone from the exuberance of Beaujolais Nouveau. Yeah, to the complexity of those crew villages. A whole spectrum. It really is. Beaujolais has something for everyone. It really does. And I think the biggest takeaway from this deep dive is that Beaujolais is more than just a wine. Absolutely. It's a reflection of a place, its people, their dedication to these amazing wines. Their passion. Exactly. So as we raise a glass of this Beaujolais Nouveau. Cheers. Let's toast to the winemakers of Beaujolais, past and present for sharing their passion with the world. Cheers to that. And to all our listeners, I encourage you to uh, really explore the world of Beaujolais, from the Nouveau to the crust. There's so much to discover. You won't be disappointed. And that's a wrap on our Beaujolais deep dive. Hope you enjoyed it. We uncorked history, science, terroir. A little bit of everything. And a whole lot of passion. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep those glasses filled with delicious discoveries. Cheers.